you want to go bars closer together? Hey, your bars are way too far apart, man. Seriously? Okay, see this little time thing down here? Put your mouse right there, left click, hold it down, and drag it all the way to the right. And that will help out. Okay, so again, if you open an OP chart using the template I gave you in Room, which we'll have some OP charts available in the toolkit soon, but again, I did download it in the Room for you for you to save it. There you go. Um, and you open up in a 10 tech diagnostic bar order print chart. So when you open it up, choose diagnostic bars and then choose the template. And you get like this massive thing right here. Go in and drag it to the left. And you can use like your alt up and down and left and right to adjust your bars as well. And you can, so that ought to help it. All right, Chris, cool. So now show me your after chart, will you? Chris, so I can show that as an example. So this is Chris's chart. We first opened it and it was really wide. And now we dragged it to fix it. And now if you can give me an example of the good one, then other people can see before and after on the order prints chart. The video quality actually should be pretty good here uh, this week. Mark, I don't know if you've watched any of the videos from this week, have you? Or did you just watch like last week's? Last week, Tony was having to get some stuff set up. And so sort of last minute, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be in the room. And he's like, ah, and he ran to scramble to get it. So it wasn't as good. But everybody told me this week's are fantastic. Have you watched any of this week's uh, videos, Mark? Even though last Monday and Tuesday were still like, the quality wasn't perfect, but still, like, they were fantastic content. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, go to our YouTube channel, Mike, and um, you can listen to the videos there. Yeah, everybody told me that all the videos from this week were great, so I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Like, quality and audio and all that. All right, so this is after, but uh, you, again, you can stretch it a little bit more out now so you can you know, see information. And if you load that order print chart, you'll get rid of all that information you don't need. But you can still listen to them. Don't like, some people are like, oh, I can't see the instrument or the number, and that doesn't really matter. You know, like, just listen. Okay? There's nothing to be bummed about. Listen, you'll learn so much. I mean, think of it as an audio a little static on it from last week. Yeah, don't worry about the visual on it at all. Visual doesn't matter. Listen to what I have to say. It applies to every chart. Okay? You can always pull up the chart. I had, you know, oil, NASDAQ. I'm talking about the charts that I'm going through, and you can look at it that day. It wasn't, I wasn't talking about order prints last week, so if you open the chart, you'll see the same chart I was talking about. I did a lot of conversation about Dow on Monday. But again, the audio is what is really important on those Monday and Tuesdays. Like you can just turn them into a chapter. Okay? So yeah, stress that a little bit further out. You don't need that far back on your order print chart. You will need that far back on your other charts. So you make this little button right here. It's a maximize button. Click the maximize button. Click square. Take your screen. Okay, Amanda, um, I'm going to check your trade out, but knowledge is not power. Knowledge is not power. Quoting Napoleon Hill from Think and Grow Rich. The correct order and strategic use of knowledge is power. If knowledge is power, presidents would be all professors. So again, knowledge is not power. The correct use of knowledge is. Enter three ticks below on eyes on sharpshooter. I don't know what three things you have here. I don't know what what did your order print say to you? I mean, you do have a divergence. You go short here, not there. What did your order print tell you? I think I want you to really start doing when you're posting a chart, asking a question, is have your order prints right next to it. Okay, so we can see what it's telling you as well. All right, I'm still on TF right now. T 
you have your order print chart open or have you even opened it yet? You got to respond quickly or else I cut off your question and move to the next person. If you post a question, you got to be ready to answer. Going once, Sermendar. Going twice, Sermendar. Going three times. No answers to any questions I've asked, so moving on to the next question. All right, so what other question do you... Okay, what's your question, Ivar? I need screenshots with it. Don't just ask me a random question. A lot of silence. Hey, Lori, why don't you like stop the recording and restart it? So we have a little more content because this is a lot of dead air. And so in a trade long for NASDAQ, what would be a good target? Okay, so one of the big things I suggest is that you do show me your order prints with your chart. So do you have your order prints open, Ivar? And I'm assuming you went long down here. I'll use a little. So assuming you took a long right there. Okay, so like when you open, you want to, so you, you do have an order branch chart. This only had the last four bars. So what do you think is when you open the chart, like you want to have that order branch open the first thing in the morning, like any chart you're looking at, order print should be running. Okay. So now I have the whiteboard on right there for you, Mark. Um, I don't know what you mean by DoorDash. That'll help me a lot with your target, right? So, I mean, we're going above the, you know, I guess and this is the negative 0.7 deviation level right now. And with order prints, like I taught yesterday, it'll show you where to trail your stops, which by now you probably would be stopped out on the trade. Um, like right up here, which would be I mean, a good thing. That'd be a nice profit on NASDAQ. Okay. So I don't know if you're looking for a new long, but that long right there was prob is you know, probably out of here unless you just use predictor, which is great. I mean then you'd still be, you know, in the trade and looking for like your stars and your acceleration and stuff like that to move up your stops. Does that help answer your question, Ivar? It's a good trade. It's profitable. If you're using order, order prints, I mean, you're you're out pretty close to the top. So that's why I'm really trying to urge everybody to get their order prints going. Over here, we got a low 47.98. We get a low 47.94. We're breaking three ticks below on oil. This is a live chart. So we actually are, we had some acceleration on that chart. We do have long delta, which is a little interesting. I'd really love to see it break down below here. But that is a setup to go short. If we could break below this, that'd be really ideal. Because see that power line level right there? 
pulled down both of our hair. And this is, I was looking to get a short right here, but it didn't break it by one tick. Like that was, my order was ready and waiting by one tick. But I have a short trend catcher. So short trend catcher. Everything I need is flipped. And badge pointing down. The purple horizontal lines are my deviation levels. What else do you notice? What's a big thing you can notice on this trade right here? What do we have showing up? Yeah, the L1 is a mini magnet. So we should expect the market to at least pull back to that, right? Remember, my order was one tick below that thing, and it didn't get filled. So I would really like it for it to get below it so I can get filled. That's, you know, y'all wanted me to look at a live trade, so we're looking at a live one right now. We're using the order print to help me get a little more specific on this trade. And I'm not doing it because of fear or PL. I'm doing it because of what I see on the chart. Um, I don't put them on the continuum bars yet. I haven't really. So far, I've used them just on diagnostic bars. Five-minute bars aren't bad. I mean, I know Rick rocks it on five-minute bars. He has his own method, which has some objectivity and a lot of subjectivity. And one of you know one of my goals, and we've I've learned a lot from Rick. He's taught me some stuff. I've taught him some stuff that's been really good. Um, but one of my goals for you is to teach you to be able to use objective methods <laughs> we're just sort of watching this bar for a second okay let's see how it goes i think we're gonna bust through we're gonna put on a short spread the way i'm looking at the 44 50 49 50 230 expiration okay Right over here. And the 40, 100, 50, 100 as my hedge. Do y'all see that? So, why did I choose this hedge? What makes this a good hedge? And the word hedge means insurance, okay? It means lowering your risk. So a hedge is a contract. What you're doing is you have a bias, in this case, mainly to the short side, okay? And I have a long contract to lower my risk. In this case, I'm not only covering all my risk, but I could actually make money if oil flew way, I mean, I have to go pretty far, but if it flew way up. 
So what is my risk on the short contract without the hedge? How much am I risking on just the short contract without the hedge? 155 bucks. So if I just went short, $155. Okay. Now when I buy the long contract to lower my risk, what is my risk and how do I know what my risk is? On my total position. Yeah, so like 4814 minus 4793, you know, give or take, whatever, right? So, we're at 19 ticks. About 200 bucks. So, you subtract the offer of the one you bought from the bid of the one you sold. Okay. The offer the one you bought, the buy price from the bid of the one you sold, and you get your risk on the hedge. Does that make sense? Now that risk is pretty much locked in. I mean, you can get out before the trade expires. And I'm in now. Because we came down and we broke. Okay, so we're in. All right. And then live. So I'm short that contract and long the other one. Okay. Now... How, many, how far does the market need to move below the floor of my hedge? Because my long contract is my hedge. How far does the market need to move below that for me to make a profit? Now, by the way, I could also be short oil and long 10 contracts. Very important. I saw a question earlier today that they said, hey, I went short you know, oil and I bought like three contracts and my hedge isn't working. This thing right here. Okay, should be fixed. But let me just tell you the simple math. And let me get that resolved. If oil, if an oil spread is worth $1 a tick, $1 a tick, okay? And oil futures are worth ten dollars a tick. How many oil spreads do you need to equal one oil future? All right, 10, exactly. Ezra, where did you get the number 15 from? <laughs> 
wonder what your math was. Okay, no. To hedge, if you're short oil or long oil, it doesn't really matter, and it's worth $10 a tick and Nadex is worth $1 a tick, you want them to be equal ticks value. So how do you make an oil spread worth $10 a tick? You do 10 oil spreads. Has nothing to do with the risk on the hedge. Has to do with equalizing the tick value. Okay. Yes. Well, if you're doing an oil future, one oil future is 10 bucks. Okay. So you need 10 oil spreads. If you're doing 10 spreads, like say to go short, then you need 10, <coughs> pardon me, futures to go short. So if I know I have about a, you know, let us say $20 risk. Then if I did 10, I'd have how much, what would be my, my risk on the contract? But I had $20 risk on one, I did 10 of them, $200 risk, yeah. Okay, I could do one of them, two of them, three of them, four of them, you know, whatever. Right? We're real, notice how we're really battling at this mini magnet right here. Again, also an apex power line right there. I think one of the questions was, why did you override the apex? The apex is one of my entries. Okay, it's one of the entries. So I can take an apex entry, I can take a bad entry, I can take a iZone sharpshooter entry, all off the same chart. If, do I look for more? What do you mean do I look for more if Apex contracts? Really? No. I mean, Apex, I'm trading sort of by itself, you know, and I'll look for confirmations, you know. I own Sharpshooter, I'll look for confirmations. I can tell you one thing I don't like about the Apex entry is my VAT is short. And I'm getting chop bars. Notice how they're all orange, 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 orange. My VAT going short. That doesn't make me feel real good about that Apex entry. You see what I'm talking about? I see once we broke that thing, it's like, bam. Right through it. So, you know, I try to, you have a system, but you got to back up, you know, and I talk about this, you got to back up and look and think. And go, what else do I see? Okay, I see an A, I see a P, I see an E, you know, et cetera. But I also see a lot of chop, and again, my VAD's going short. And I'm coming into a magnet level, which, by the way, it hit perfectly and bounced off of, right? So that combination right there helps me go, not a good entry. All right, so now we're at another level that's also a magnet and a deviation. So we have to push through this. We can 
get through this when you start making some cash. <laughs> yeah, 2013. We've come a long way since 2013. I still love Apex. That's why you still see that on my chart. But now we've added a few uh, variables that help us uh, better evaluate which uh, signal stronger. So you don't end up buying, and then it's like, boom, and then it reverses right against me. Ah, it always does that. You know, that type of thing. So and when you got in that trade, you would have tied your stop anyway right there because of that short acceleration. That's the blue right there. Okay. Now we're absorbing a lot of the buyers right now. That's what that red means. The hard part is we've got to push past this level. Now if we do, We got a pretty solid move on down to ice, right? And then to move on down to the last power line, which also happens to be an ISO. What am I thinking when I see what I don't give a lot of weight to what all the colors are while it's live. Okay. Mike, so that's a good question. What is my stop? I don't need one. Because my risk is 20 bucks a contract and it expires at 230 at the same time as my short. Now I can trail my stop once I get to where my net position is profitable. But right now, I have no reason for a stop loss. Because of the hedge, exactly. If it flies against me, I can still make money. Make more if it'll keep going south. So that's sort of nice. Like, I know what my risk is. You know, whether it be 20 or 200 or 600, depending on how many contracts you're doing. So I know what my risk is. And my risk isn't going to change. I mean, I may see it fluctuate with bid and offer and all that fun stuff. I just use the lightning bolt to hop in. This is like the super ideal hedge. If I leave the computer, then I wouldn't be going far and I would have my phone on where I could monitor price. <laughs> I mean, could I put a profit target? Yeah, I mean, you could go in, you could put like a stop trigger to trigger when it like gets at say 47, you know, 68 down here at ICE. You know, take off so many contracts or, you know, whatever. Exactly, could layer out. So there's another magnet down here. If it breaks through, we can see it going to. 
which is probably also lined up with that P bar, I bet. 475, 47, yep. <laughs> so the P bar line, power line, which comes off of the P bar. And then the mini mag, like that's going to be a strong level for the market to move to if it continues to move down. So those would really be my next two short targets for the day. After that, I mean, we got a return to settlement. So to pick up on if you have any contracts left. And it's sort of boring, right? By the way, boring is like one of the best things you can do in trading. <laughs> Again, I have zero fear in this trade. If it goes up against me, I can profit. If it goes far enough. If it doesn't, I've already accepted my risk. So now I'm just waiting for it to move in the right direction. Trying to understand, Mike says, I'm, or sorry, John says, I'm trying to understand options for hedge strategy. Okay, any guidance on realistic expectations or targets for risk on various markets? I just want the lowest risk I can get, you know, usually somewhere between 10 and 50 bucks when I do a hedge, you know, on a single. Um, the lower the implied volatility that day, the, you know, the better hedge I'm going to get. Was your oil trade this week? Are you talking about Mondays, I'm guessing, at Anomaly? No, that's just that's what we're doing right now. Um, it was like a $9 risk. Yeah, it was pretty cool. His implied volatility was just low. Um. I could get a lower hedge on this one too. I could get a lower risk on this one. I mean, I'll show you. You could go in here and you know, buy that one instead, right? I mean, that's a $3 risk. But it has like a 67 tick option cost so again the net result most I could lose is four bucks but it's gonna have to move 67 ticks past the floor before I'm gonna make anything it's like this one would have to move 177 ticks past the ceiling before I'd make anything so I chose this one, a little more risk, but can make money a lot sooner. So the market turns around on you and goes the other way. Then I will cheer it on and hope it goes way up. And then I just use a throw and stop like I was in a long once it got into profit. Does that make sense? So like once it covered the cost of this option here, you know, say at 50, 25 or whatever, then I'd start throwing my stop. Does that make sense? So it's sort of cool. Like, I've accepted my risk. There's no heartbeat movement on ticks. Now it's just move. Pick a direction and go. Uh, those pink fuchsia, whatever, those are magnets, which we just broke. 
That's some pretty good volume. So if the best edge was 45 minutes from now, which I could probably could have found one that was, um, just I've found that there's some pretty good low volatility dailies right now. Um, when I get another one, I would have I just have to choose. Okay, like I have to make a choice. Like that, do I just want to take my risk and just top out of the trade because the thing hasn't moved, or you know, so what is that going to cost me to exit that trade, right? Um, maybe very little, maybe nothing. It depends on how close it was to the market when I got in. And uh, let's say it's, you know, a small risk. You know, maybe I've given up 10 bucks, right, per contract. And then I throw in another hedge because it's still short. It's just taking a long time because it's, like, at a battle zone. So I may decide to throw another one on. Or you're like, this trade isn't working out. I'm going to wait for another one. So that's really a, a personal choice if you want to put on an additional contract. Another way to hedge with low proximity spread is 10 or less for best results. Nope, because if your proximity is always low, I mean, proximity low is good, yes. Definitely agree, okay? But if the cost of the contract is high, if the risk, the money you got to put on the hedge is high, then it has to move really far to cover that profit. So let's sort of look at this and let's say let's say we were going long on this contract and we sold this as a hedge. Okay? And so we we accepted our twenty dollar risk, but what's going to happen is this is going to have to lose everything. Which this one will make all of that, okay? But now that it's made all of the profit that this, now that the long contract made all the profit, the short contract lost. Now it starts making money. So we're talking about having to move pretty far before we start making cash. Whereas since I'm going short, we've covered the risk in the hedge, and now we're going to start moving into a profit level if we continue to go. Does that make sense? So proximity is good, but you got to look at how far you're requiring the market to move in order to actually get into profit. Otherwise, you're just sort of locking in a risk. So do you have an expectation that it will move that far? Yeah, I've added spreads before. I mean, I add contracts all the time, but just trying to keep it simple. This is one Marion took the other day. Earlier today, I'm sorry. It's right there. So yeah, so that's a great hedge. Covers your risk. Looking for the short. Um, and then your hedge doesn't cost that much, so it doesn't have to move that far for you to get in profit. Which is a benefit, a nice benefit. Um, looking down here, I mean, you got thirteen dollars that's got to move below. You'd have one that was twenty dollars, so twenty ticks that had to move below that you could have looked at. So for seven more ticks, you could have had another hour and a half. So you may want to, you know, consider that contract there. I think that may be the one we're in right now. But um, so. Good hedge, and then you've got to choose do I want to pay seven more ducks for an hour and a half to have my hedge and have it all the way to the end of the day, and possibly make money if it goes against it. Mm. 
Mike, are you talking about this wine right here? Mike, are you talking about this line right here? That's a magnet. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say it. That is a magnet from my 10-minute charts. You know, I teach magnet levels. You can come on your 10-minute charts and you can turn it on to show Google say whatever you draw on your 10-minute chart shows on Google show you that. So yeah, Marion's total risk on the trade. 4798, 4813. So 156. That is correct. Good job, Jason. As we subtracted the offer of the contract from that bid of the sold contract, that lets us know what the total risk is. So he has magnets, it's right to it. Battling it out. And it can be nerve wracking, but if, and this is one thing I talked about the other day, if you know where the levels are going to be, it's less nerve wracking. Okay. Again, it's less nerve wracking if you know where the levels are going to be, because I expect there to be a battle here. I mean, we're up to 12,000 contracts. So pretty big battle going on. I mean, before we had 2,000, 4,000, 9,000, okay? So, it's a pretty big battle. We got a little positive delta right there. So, obviously, I'd like to see that go negative for us. Delta is the second number. The high number is the gross volume. Lots of business taking place here. Lots of orders. So let's go back and take a look over at our eye zone chart. So we're still moving on down. Got a lot of shorts going on there. Ads are still very short. Not getting a warning yet on VAD. Yeah, about thirty to forty thousand. So I mean, all I do is I open a chart up, I drag on a ten minute chart, I drag it all the way to the left so I can see as much as possible. And then I try to just grab like the top tier of levels. I think we have like a whole section in the forum on magnets. Let's see if I can find it for you. Okay. What's funny is like you notice I can cover my chart and I'm not freaking out. Why do y'all think I'm not freaking out? Because what if it turns around and starts flying up? So I have any reason to be afraid? Is my risk going to grow? Am I going to get stopped out on the trade? Exactly. Hedge buys peace of mind. Cap Captain Chris, that is the way to put it. It's like Xanax for traders. <laughs> Let's see here. It ought to be under my guess is study or style. Volume analysis style. All right, so there's a whole section here on volume analysis, but let me see if this one. Let me 
Let's see, we got expected volume indicator download, expected movement and volume on any market, momentum scalp trades and exits, momentum scalp profit examples, magnet price walkthrough for analyzing volume for target price level, trading anything, but specifically, I'm focusing on the index spreads. Magnet pricing walkthrough for analyzing volume for target price levels when trading these binaries. Live application of the above. With an elite MVP. Oh, I think I made a couple grand in that trade or something. Um, momentum scalps, magnet price walkthrough. Yeah, there you go. So there is a page of. Volume heaven right there for you. Okay. And again, that's just S7 style volume analysis. So if you go to the forum, go to S7 style and then volume analysis. I'll show you back on the forum home. There actually is an order to the forum. Most people don't realize that um, it's not just random. We start off with psychology. <laughs> and then going to <clears throat> money management. <clears throat> Pardon me. Your schedule, what markets you're going to trade, you know, structure, uh, making sure you have, you know, a broker account, data, things like that. Um, study, you know, going through indicators, what they mean, you know, your courses, your strategies. Um, how to look for trade scanning. So, but S7 again, style right there. Talks about fundamentals, seasonalities. You know, there's all sorts of little, there's lots of lessons. And then, of course, these videos are always posted under the webinar section. And um, when I'm doing them, when it's a trader doing it, not just a webinar. Like in the room, then it's usually under traders helping traders. And by the way, that max loss usually applies if you hold the contract all the way to expiration. So a lot of times it'll be less than that pretty quick as the market moves. This is going to be like a really long video. This, this is like the one reason why I don't like doing live trades on videos is because they can take forever. Sometimes they take like 15 seconds and it's like, sweet. But we ran into a magnet. So we got to let the market sort itself out and decide what it's going to do. Now, here's a good point. To bring up. And by the way, you can bookmark. I don't know if you know that. In the forum, you can bookmark pages and stuff. There's a little bookmark icon. So you can save your bookmarks and pull them up of your favorite videos to get back to them easily. Versus just using your browser bookmark. As long as you're logged in. Um, so I'm already short. I'm hedged. I've accepted my risk. If it goes down a little bit more, start making some cash. If it flies up and really flies up, I can actually make some cash. It stays flat, my risk is my risk. What is the one thing I should be looking for right now? That trade's done. I have nothing to worry about on it. It is what it is. 
So what now that trade is there, you know, I got till two thirty for the thing to do its thing. What should I be looking for right now? Perfect, Ezra. Yes, Craig. Exactly. My next trade. Okay. So remember I talked about the four steps of trading being, you know, volume analysis, level analysis, what needs to happen for me to take a long or short, and then backing up and going, well, if I was a trader, where would my stops be, right? Where would my breakout trades be? To help me let, know where the market's going to go for targets, things like that. So, and looking at this chart, we knew there were going to be stops there. We got through it. We got a magnet, so we expected some, you know, but I expect a lot to stop sit down here, down at this peak. So right there, 47.53. Like right in that range. Back up over here. Again, there's a magnet level right there. Okay, it's the next magnet level. It's also a pivot. It's also a low. When the market stopped and went up, okay, where markets were not filled. Remember, magnet means there are orders sitting there that were not filled. Hence why the market likes to go where the orders are located, okay? So this really is my main target down here at 47.55. So we go short. But I should always be ready. To look for the next trade. Now, here is a cool thing about Nadex. If I wanted to do an opposite trade, because I got, let's just say I got a long signal, could I do that? And stay in my short? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to do the same contract. That would be pointless. Okay, you just close the trade out. But if I got a long signal here, oh, what just happened, by the way? Who can tell me what just happened on the chart? Something popped up. What is it? On the order print chart. Cluster, yes. It hasn't closed yet, so not out close. It won't close till the bar closes, okay? So this cluster is going to be a big determination here of whether we think this thing's going to keep going in our favor or not, okay? The bar closes down. We continue consider that a what? The bar closes down with that cluster. What do we consider that cluster telling us? I'm talking about this purple thing right here. So when the bar closes, it's a continuation cluster. Okay. Now if the bar goes closes up, then it's a potential reversal cluster, right? So potential reversal. I want to put that big word potential reversal in there. You gotta have some other things tell you to go the other way. Okay. But this means we have a massive battle happening. And we talked about it. We we're not surprised. We remember we said, hey, there's gonna be a battle here. We got a magnet, we got a deviation level. We should expect a battle right about here. And we're getting that battle. The exact battle we expected has happened. Which helps reduce fear when the market slows down and you're like freaking out about every tick. Right? So, I should be looking for a potential reversal. 
Now, one thing I do want to point out to you is we have, let's go really this, we have a divergence here to say go short if that bar closes down. Get a very light, remember I like them to be about 50% smaller. That's where it's the same. There's really no divergence there. To say go short. Or to say go long. So Maryland had a hedge on that but your hedge isn't showing on your screenshot. You gotta click it so it shows. I mean, this is high enough volume that this is the this I mean could easily turn into a reversal. You'll notice the higher volume bars, often 12,000. Now that one closed up. But like 23,000 closed down. So down, we're at 17,000. I mean, it's got a big factor in whether or not this trade is going to be what we want it to be. We have another hour and a half of the trade to do what it's going to do. And again, still very little risk. So Maryland, again, I'm going to sort of point out to you, that for three more dollars risk, you could have had until expiration. So don't forget to look at those dailies, okay? I mean, just three bucks and you get all like basically you don't have to put another contract on and three takes it as you know three takes an oil is nothing but good hedge just trying to help save you some money on your hedges This is like the battle bar of the century right here, isn't it? Okay, well, to learn about the magnets, you're going to have to look at the links above, but they're based on very high volume bars on 10 minute charts. So then you have to manually plot. If you're doing it on forks, you have to use the expected volume on it. So that way you get the futures FX. It's really trying. She could. Yeah, so she's already profitable on it. But she's going to pay four bucks a round trip to flip to the next one to 
get in and get out. Get out and get in a new one. Um, another thing about apexes, somebody was asking about, you know, how do you determine your apexes? And I talked about how, you know, hey, bad was against this apex and that the bars were saying chop. One of my other rules, if you watch the apex elite system, is that it has to line up with the MVP. And the MVP is short. I do not like taking apexes against this dash line, this MVP line. So if it's red, I do not like taking trades against it. Because this is what happens. That was an E and then fells. And an E and then in this case, sort of hoping that it fells. Right? So going against the momentum volatility predictor. These bars are the hardest bars to watch. It's probably the hardest thing as a trader to suffer through and have discipline. But it's really helpful. I mean, or y'all tell me, is it really helpful to know that we expected this to be a battle bar? And then we saw that show up right there that it confirmed even more that it's a battle bar. So we should expect it to take a while. Is that is that a helpful thing? Versus just like, Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Like, well, we know what's going on. There's a lot of orders there. So, awesome. So, yeah, it does it does help y'all. Very helpful. Extremely helpful. Yeah, it, it helps me be patient. <laughs> you know, I mean, none of, like, if you're a trader, you probably aren't naturally patient you really have to force patience uh you know another word for patience is long suffering it right but knowing that i expect a battle there it's like okay you know it's like if i go out traffic at you know five o'clock in dallas i'm gonna be more patient because i expect there to be a lot of traffic now if i go out there at 11 a.m and there's a lot of traffic i'm gonna be a little patient because i didn't expect there to be traffic You know, there's a, there is a way to do it, but we're working on making it even clearer. We're making it real change. One of the future additions um, is we're working on a thing that will actually change the color of the bar, like on C's, to show you that that was a cluster bar. You don't have to add all the OP stuff to it. You'll just, like, it'll be like a purple bar. How's that sound? Step by step, just adding little things to, you know, make it easier and easier. So if we were going to take a long trade, if I was trading pure futures and I had no hedge, yes, I would take some profit partially right there. I would have taken it down here like at this level, the magnet. And then Expecting the battle and then going down here and then to this magnet ultimately. Like these are the basically two battles I expect. This is where if we get the volume momentum down, this is where I would expect the market to end the day on as far as it's low is around forty seven fifty five.
So what would happen if we were to get a long signal? Oh, and by the way, a little trick for you, Matthew. Let's say you're trading futures and you're short. Let's say you're hedging, okay, with spreads. Um, and you want to go long, you could actually do like two mini oils. Same size as an oil contract. And you could go long. And then hedge. So, pretty cool. Can't do that with most markets, but since there's a mini oil and a full oil, you could actually go the other direction at the same time. Wouldn't make any difference unless you had hedges on. Then you're just zeroing out, you know. Um, so what would it have for us to go long? Like a bad signal could be what we're looking for. Exactly. Need the MVP to flip for having an apex long. We could have a trend catcher entry. Right? So you got trend catcher. You got apex MVP. You got bad. It's sort of cool. You have three different signals right there on the chart that you could take for a long trade. You just got to wait for them to line up and give you everything you need. So one thing I want you to always keep in mind is when you're short, be looking for a long, okay? You're long, be looking for a short. One, that's a really good exit signal. <laughs> if you get a solid signal to go the other way, Okay. Um, and two, don't get so caught up in having to win on the trade that you're in that you miss out on the trade that does win being the next trade. I think that's why I love locking in my risk because then it's like, well, whatever happens, happens. Bad E green would help, but I still don't have a divergence. But it would help me confirm taking a long trade. But I don't have a divergence on the bad A. Yes, we actually had that battle on this deviation. Look at all the bars that crossed their price levels. And look at them. There's a lot. Almost every single bar in this whole range here hit that deviation level. So, I mean, orders were filled like crazy. There's like what one magnet. I think it's pretty hard to see. We gotta lighten that up. We gotta bring that into a better color. 
But um, I'm always afraid to change things. I'm afraid I'm not going to go poof. But um, I got one vat there, one vat there. And I would have one mini main magnet there with this one. So I mean, we're sort of in this range, you could say, this chop level on this trade at the moment. And we're really waiting for Idelia to break out and hit here and then hit right here. That's what we're shooting for. And yeah, if you were um, short and in the future, then by all means, you know, if you weren't hedging, then I mean, you grabbed 20 ticks, you grabbed, made a couple hundred bucks. Not too shabby. You can go into uh, properties if you want to move this over so it's not like lining up on the side. Right click properties and make that like 60. And it'll push it over so it's not overlapping into your price level. Bar finally closed, going up a little bit. Trying to add on. waiting for it to play out. There it is. I don't know why I couldn't see that for the life of me. Okay. Mini magnets line color. There we go. Two eleven number six. Let's go for more like a yellow. Uh, 
All right, now we pray that we don't lose our data. Yay, we kept it. Ah, now, see, that makes the magnets very clear. Even one right there I didn't even see. Trend line has a foot to give you a trend catcher long. I wouldn't be completely shocked if this bar was also a cluster bar. We'll see. If you want to see something else, I was going to mess it up. I know it's not a great thing to add sub indicators, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. So, wife was calling me. She ran to the vet to grab something for one of our horses who cut his foot. I to give him a tetanus shot. Kicked the gate and pulled his shoe off and cut his foot. So yesterday I was doctoring him up. Okay, could the market makers be yellow be in the next toolkit update? They could be in your current toolkit. Just right click. Go to indicators and change the color. 
what I can do is I can save this if you'd like me to. I don't know what I keep calling them. I'm just going to save it as parallel P. Okay. And save that to documents, Ninja Trader templates. Chart. Save it there. So click on that link and then the top, when you do it, when you click here, you can click File, Save Document As. Okay. Pull up a C chart. Give me a second. I'll pull one up for you. I have one around here somewhere. I don't know what I was looking for, but it's basically a C chart. I know it's so quiet whenever you get one of these bars. It's like it's fast, 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 and then it's just. But this is trading. If it does go up, where do we expect it to be drawn to? Exactly, right around 48.16. Very good. And then why is that? Why do you, upper magnet, and what does that magnet mean? I'm trying to help y'all make sure everybody gets the why, not just the what. Yeah, it's unfinished business. There's order still just hanging out there. The market likes to go to orders. Draft orders are the yellow. What we see here, or the orange, or whatever, whatever color that is. I found it very interesting on this bar, even though we got the double accelerations and everything, which shouldn't be a surprise because we had so much more volume than the previous bars. I find it interesting that we didn't have momentum 
We didn't have tracked orders. You know, there's a lot of things we just did not that did not show up. That that makes sense. You look at that cluster bar. We didn't have a lot happen in that bar. We had a lot of volume. We didn't have like a lot of commitment. It didn't end up with absorption. It didn't end up with acceleration. It didn't end up with leading volume, which is the blue, the leading volume. And it didn't end up with any you know, trapped orders. So, I'm just trying to help you all, like, you know, to sort of see, because that's, that's what this is all about, is seeing what's on the chart. We had it, and remember when I said potential reversal, right? I was very big on that potential word. Again, no acceleration. No absorption, no trapped orders, and no leading volume. So very little happening in that bar to really say that's where we're going like, as far as the upside. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes, no. Like how there's no information in there. Like nothing special happened in the bar. And they're all going to have total, it does have acceleration because, but think about why did it have acceleration? Acceleration means a lot more volume than the previous bars. Okay? So, not a surprise that that bar had acceleration. Why is settlement so important? Settlement is the number that every trader that trades had a consensus on at the close of the market as to what that contract was worth. So that acceleration by itself on that potential reversal bar with nothing else showing reversal it's not very strong
Right. No absorption, no momentum, no eating volume, like nothing happening there. Remember, you may see things pop up during a bar, but at the close, that's what really matters, right? Now, we know the cluster, once it's, once it's there, it's going to be there. Now, it may be at a different price level because it's going to be the highest volume bar in there. Nope, I have the imbalances turned. I thought I had imbalances. I'm pretty sure they're turned off. If they're not, I should turn them off. Imbalances are pretty useless. That's one thing that I've really we've really been working to do is we took a lot out of there's a lot of you know order flow and footprints out there. And we, what I did was with our team, we looked at everything and rewrote a ton of formulas and algorithms, took out a lot of crap, and then we put some stuff in just to see if we could find anything. Um and then some of the stuff's just nothing. So as you can see, like the blocks I have off, the imbalances I have off, the weak imbalances I have off, the balanced volumes I have off, paw prints are off, exhaustions are off, the blocks are off. Net volume diversion, so it went on. Blocks I'm not worried about. Leading volume I like. X levels out. Clusters definitely. 9 to 19 box for your traders. You can turn that on. There we go. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to resave my template. Because I had a mistake there. All right. DMOP template. I guess we'll go with that one. Okay. DMOP template. This is good. I like doing this stuff with you live because we're going through it and we're figuring out the best way to really show you what we're looking at. Because my goal is to not make you dependent on me as a trader, but to empower you. Change that setting. See here, DMOP. Oh, it's double underlined. I bet. There it is. Okay, so there's with uh, another small update on it. Yeah, just trying to get this template because we haven't had a template on OP officially yet. So 
the DMOP template. I actually turned the divergences on, which is one of the lessons I was wanting to teach you. And I'm like, why are there not any on? Because I don't have it on. Um, your divergences are something you want to be very, very aware of. That's also a very good sign to tighten a stop. And it basically means that there is more volume in the opposing direction. Okay? So, the bar closed up, but there was actually negative delta. See that? Like negative 1181, negative 244. That would be a tightening stop area. Right? Come over here. You got another one. Positive 78, closing down. That could be a tightening stop area. So this one, now don't count on it while it's live because all the numbers can change while the bar is live, right? And once you change it, make sure you save the template as whatever name you want to save it as. But save it over mine, whatever, but just save it. This sort of could too because you're able to actually see how you can change the settings. Let this thing move faster just for the purpose of, you know, the video lesson, right? Bust through the level. All right, what other questions do y'all have? I mean, we're sitting here, you know. I am here to answer. Review charts, answer questions, Nadex, Futures, Forex, anything. I mean, normal options. So I made my living breaking into trading by trading equity options. That's how I actually started trading full-time. Over 70 strategies on that, so I can help you out on those too. I mean, just, you know, pick your topic. All right, so John, so post your chart for me, okay? If you can, ideally, like a trend catcher or C's and OP, like in the screenshot. Are oh, you talking about the one that I did last uh, Monday where I said the market will go here? I did it in like 15 seconds because I broke that level. Is that what you're talking about? You need one more trade for it to be an elevator, one more bar for it to be an elevator, right? If it broke through the low of this magnet, that would be fantastic. So, Mike, just because it went down and hit that level doesn't mean it's done for the day. I mean, it could completely reverse. That just is the target for the current trade. I 
you know, alcohol level on a whale, it'll fly down, hit it, or fly up, hit it, whatever, and then it may go all the way back the other direction. And Arian has a question about this chart. Well, I mean, you're getting cluster, cluster, cluster. You're getting divergence, divergence, divergence. You got a apex short. Trend catchers pointing short. It would be nice to have bad E pointing short to confirm it. You do have all the sellers absorbing all the buyers on the momentum at the very top of that P level. I haven't opened YM to see what happened after that, but I mean, it breaks the low of this E. Then you, know, you got to trade and start throwing it. Like that would be the analysis I would have if that's the one you're looking if you're talking about this right here because as far as the time frame yeah it went up but you had to notice how you had divergence you had negative delta negative delta negative delta on your divergence is that orange so you had three clusters but you also had negative delta in all three of them. Meaning you had more short contracts happening than longs while rising. So that's, and then finally you get an absorption bar. Comes down, makes your E, breaks your E. I mean, that's a very good sign. Like I said, I can't see all the chart, but Yeah, I would expect cluster bars to have market mini magnets. So it's going to have to bust through them. So when it busts that E, it's basically going to bust this first one. It'll have to bust the other two. But it will be pulled back towards those. And then you're probably going down to 2770. As soon as you bust the third one, you got a nice move. 35 point move would be the the next target and then of course trail as you get you know any of the things like we talked about yesterday you get acceleration momentum things like that does that help Marion Okay. Did you tighten your stops at all as you were getting, as you got each piece? I mean, was there other, anything else on your order prints? Like, did you see acceleration, momentum, absorption? Like, I can't see what happened after it to see what you would have done with it. And then I would have looked, I mean, again, you got to look for a long trade. Remember the one thing I told you on the short. And the one thing you don't have, I said this at the very front, is you don't have your VAT E pointing down yet. Right? And we really like to trade with that VATI. So that's the one thing. Did the VATI ever turn short?
So that's why you didn't go in a denton shirt. Well, good for you. I mean, a lot of this says, like, get ready for a reversal, get ready for a reversal, get ready for a reversal. But your volume accumulation distribution never said reversal. So kudos. Very good. Because you're looking for that short, and you're like, that's where I'm going to go short if I can get this to go short. So that's awesome. So you're not just like purely system, you're actually using style and reading the market. So good analysis. Can I explain the difference between a green ice and a red ice? Uh, the blue ice is the highest, is the point of control of the previous day, the highest volume. And then the green ice and the red ice are the levels that contain 70% of the volume that happened within the previous day. So you take all the volume that happened yesterday on every single price level, put it together, and what's a one deviation of that? And that's what your ice levels are. So the red's just the low point and the green's the high point. There's also another video under like study or whatever that um, where I go into ice, and it's about 10 15 minutes long in the forum. Let's see, let's check out our trade. What's going on? A eh, whole lot of nothing. Okay. <laughs> let's see here. Okay, so Ezra, did I answer your question on that one about if it three takes below the bar? The one thing I really want to see is Vatty. I want to trade with Vatty. It's just kept me out of a lot of trouble. I'm not saying it's perfect, but overall, it's kept me out of a lot of trouble. Say to you for racing. I have no idea what you mean. Uh, just go to the indicators. Just go to the indicators, and you know, feel free to check around. You're not going to break them, right? If you do, you can always re-download it, but you're not going to break them. And go in and just find the, you know, mini magnet section and see how it says show broken and it says false so that way once they're broken they will keep plotting forever and ever and ever and there's all your settings for the minis And there's so many settings in there because we've been testing so many things for like, I want to say probably about nine months before we even put it out publicly. So, you know, we were testing a lot of ideas and seeing, you know, what had value, what didn't have value, what was noise. This is a lot cleaner. And when you get ready, you can turn the numbers back on and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll see like when there's really light volume, stuff like that, and that can help a little bit. But at the beginning, like, just make sure you get down what all these things mean that are showing up. Let's see here, going back up. Watching. Hey Keith, we don't really have plans to create templates to custom colors, but you have the ability to change a template to any color you want. Okay, 
and save it. So if you want a black background or white background or you want your bars to be pink and purple or, you know, whatever, do it. You know, like change it to what is appeasing to your eyes that you like and that's like please do it you know that would be i mean it's like i recommend you don't have to stick to our color code you know um so please yeah definitely change the colors because i mean we started cutting down and deleting some of them because we had so many different colors of different templates and it just got confusing which one do I load? So, you know, really make, you know, make the template what you want it to be. If something on there you feel is useless and you don't see any use for it, you can't figure out why it's on there, delete it. You know, I mean, or ask at least. And then if you don't get a good answer that you see a purpose and get rid of it. If you think something needs to be on there, add it. Okay. Check this one out by Jeffrey. Based on this chart, is showing a downtrend, now trend, flip change before confirmation arrow. Well, that's a trend flip change on the confirmation arrow. But it hasn't broken the low for you to get into the trade. And I can't see your chart, which is challenging. But um, the trend catch, the, the confirmation arrow happened when the trend flip happened. But, again, it still has to break three ticks below the low. And, again, what's happened in your order prints? But does that help, Jeffrey? Like that it, it was on the trend flip, but it didn't break the low? Um, I trade with Nadex and I trade with like AMP and Ninja Trader Brokerage and you know a couple others. Um, interactive brokers. I have multiple accounts. Um, I only trade with CFTC regulated exchanges um, as far as the futures and forex market goes. Um, they have to be regulated by the CFTC or NFA because they have teeth. Um, I do not want to trade with some overseas bucket shop company that they don't really have, like they say, oh, we're regulated in Cyprus, but no teeth. Okay. Like it's like a better business bureau regulation. I mean, somebody could put out a negative report on a better business bureau. You know who touched the better business bureau reports? The people who are mad already after they did the service. Um, the better business bureau has no power except for to put a nasty report up and leave it there. That's the same thing with like a Cypress reg, reg, you know, registration. It's just a bad negative report. And they also put a bad report on them if they don't pay their fee to become listed with the Cypress, you know, whatever. I actually blocked the country of Cyprus from our server because I just got sick of them. But um, they got mad that I was exposing all their crap. They tried to send me a cease and desist, and I'm like, this is America, and shove off. So I just blocked their country from our server. But... um. They don't put people in jail. They don't have real fines. I mean, CFTC, exchange, is caught doing something wrong. And you're talking million dollar fines. I mean, NFX, like this, or shut down. I and mean, we had FXCM. They did some stuff they didn't tell people about. Now, what was really crappy about it was the other brokers do it still. Like, they turn against you and benefit from that. And they tell, but they tell people. Whereas, the uh, FXCM didn't tell people about it four years ago. Now they're not even, they didn't do it in the last like two years, but they didn't tell people about it four years ago and they actually shut them down. Now I think with personally, 
what the NFA and CFTC are trying to do is I think they're trying to shove every FX broker out of the United States, spot forex, and get everything on an exchange. So that way, when you're trading, you're trading in a non-biased market where people aren't trading against you and holding your money and seeing your orders. But uh, I like Nadex simply because a lot of people can trade it with a lot less money. Uh, so it's good for new traders. Um, I'm a day trader, and Nadex is built for day traders. And I say day, I mean day or nighttime. You know, they're built for 23 hours a day. Um, you know, the commissions are fine. You know, I wish they would have left it at, you know, the $10, $9, $10 cap, but they raised that to 50 50 contracts or over over 50 but um you know they're impartial they have they brought on they're working hard to bring on more uh brokers so i don't brokers market makers they already have like three market makers now uh, they're helping for they have pl plenty of liquidity and I just like the contract. I loved options. That's how I started trading. And then I got into Forex and I made 10,000 one day and lost 10,000 the next and decided not to trade Forex for like six months. And then uh, slowly got into futures. And because uh, that's really where, you know, the money is. The futures traders understand the market better than anybody. And uh, and then when I saw futures options, I was like in bliss because that's when I came with the head strategy because I would like, man, now I can go and I can trade my futures contracts, but I can hedge with a daily or two-hour contract versus like some weekly contract that's going to move slow and cost a lot. And so I was real excited. I mean, that, that was it. I was just the ultimate. I was just trading futures and or forex at that time and hedging with it. And um, eventually I was like, hey, you know, I can also just do the spreads. And then I started seeing all the premium in the spreads from all the option strategies that I know. So I started doing option strategies with the spreads. And um, eventually, like a year later, I got into binaries. And uh, which are the most difficult instrument to trade. Uh, I'm working on some systems to try to make it simple. Like I'm like we're really trying to put some work in. Um, I mean, we were talking me, Lori, and John last night, like 3 a.m. Literally, um, trying to make some simple binary systems. Um, it's just there's so many things that impact that price, and uh, so we're working on it. And uh, we've made some systems. It's just as the market changes, the binary you choose has to change. And that's a really hard part. But um, but the, the main reason I fell in love with Nadex was because I could have intraday options to highly hedge my future trades. And it eliminated my stress. Like we've been talking all this time. I've been in a trade for, got what, two hours now or something? And I have no stress because I know what my risk is. So just move. And that's, there's no better way to trade than that. Whether you're using futures with Nadex spreads or you're using spreads with spreads. I mean, the only thing you got to be aware of is if you're using futures with spreads, you got to be aware of, a, you know, if you have a $2,000 drawdown on the futures account, let's say you make, that 1800 on the native account like you need to have that money there <laughs> to uh, have that drawdown so uh, you can always you know wire out and wire in to have it over there pretty fast if you need to move it back and forth but you know if it's in nadex on nadex then don't have to worry about it at all so that's a very long answer to your general question of why i like nadex and uh the reason I actually am with Nadex is because of my daughter. When she was like, gosh, she was four or five. And we were doing one of those trader expos in Dallas. And um, Nadex was there, which I never heard of before. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's like six years ago. Or maybe I heard of, but I just sort of uh, binaries, whatever. That's crap, you know, moved on. And um, my daughter was walking around with my wife and, you know, looking at all the booths and, I've been teaching her. She's actually been trading live futures since she was three years old. 
And uh, it's like you have to pay for all these horses, you know. And uh, she... Um, and one second. She uh, put her... You know, actually pulled her head over the booth. And they're like, hey, do you trade? And she's like, yeah. And they're like, really? What do you trade? And she's like, the Spoos, which is the floor trader name for the S&P 500. And they're like, why do you trade? And she's like, well, to compound my money, of course. And they're like, who is your father? And they're like, he's the one with the big booth over there. And then we started talking, and I just ripped him with questions for hours. And uh, by the end of it, I was like, oh, my gosh. And there was no education out there. And so I was like, I'll start making the education and give it away. So hold on one second. Get another call from the wife. Be right back. A tetanus shot for the horse. <laughs> um, okay, so that's my big answer on Nadex. All right, all right so cool. So yeah, mini manage can overwhelm your try if you don't turn them off unbroken. Um. Marin, I'm glad you're understanding OP a lot better. So yeah, you can go and you can download. You can use the market replay, the big market replay function. We I think we have it, or we may have had it. Yeah, this one right here. It's I think it's also on our homepage when you log in. But marketreplay.net, it's actually owned by one of our programmers. Um, and you can download multiple instruments and multiple days of data at once. So uh, like you can go and say, download the last month. And then to sit back and it downloads it versus doing one instrument one day at a time. So highly suggest that. Very, very helpful tool. Let's see here. From a ten, trend catcher only point of view, if you miss the entry three ticks below the setup bar and the market retraces, is it valid to enter on the pullback? Okay, so this is a I'm late to the game and the market pulls back on me. Can I still get in? Okay, so you missed this entry. It came down. It pulled back. And your stop is still up here. If you're going to get in after the pullback, okay, the one thing I would say you would need to do is you would need to put your entry, I mean, again, you got to follow the rule of momentum because you don't want to sell when the market's flying up, right? So you would still need to put your entry like three ticks below the low of a bar. So let's say it pulls back, you put it three ticks below that bar, that bar, that bar, and then finally get in. So that way you're letting the momentum of the contract take you back. Does that make sense, Ezra? 
So you're not just selling it up move. It's like, well, I'd be in anyway, so I might as well get in now. And it's like, okay, well, it's, you know, unfortunately you may have to give up some ticks, but I make, like, ideally you put it three ticks below. And if you did that, you would have avoided all this drawdown. You could have got in there, which would have been about the same price, and then followed it. So it'd still be okay. But make sure the market's going in your direction when you do that. Or make sure you have something on order print showing you. You know. I highly recommend you have the order prints out, helping you out. So Chris, you had a nice 50 tick run this morning that you were able to keep most of your profits on, thanks to the order print tutelage. From yesterday. Awesome. So I'm guessing that has something to do with helping you tighten stops with order prints. So it helped out. Chip. I mean, I said Chris. Chip. Awesome. That's very cool. Okay. Let's see here. When I own Remington Steel Products, the Better Business Bureau called me, asked me to pay them 500 for some. He has service of voicing with them, and I told them I was not interested. I was told that they would report a negative report about my company, so I gave them about zero weight, good or bad, on anything that they report, and less service, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, I think the better business bureau is sort of outweighed. It's, it's, it's way pat. I guess just ready to die. So, some of the things that it makes people feel good to have a place to complain, but that's about all it does. Um, let's see here. I like to enter on pullbacks, but only within the next bar. Yeah, I like to make sure they break out. Oil is finally moving. It's, it's it's working its way. It's hitting that magnet. It's hitting that mini magnet. It's like, come on. You can do it. I mean, it filled those unfinished orders right there. It got them. Okay, so they're done. Otherwise, we would have had more. So we should have a problem getting through this one. It's, it's pretty dead. We gotta get down now to here. Come up to push a little further. That'll take us here. And then we'll go here and we'll chill out. It's like, but we have 15 minutes for you to do something. So do something. So, so, you know, some tips on, you know, people that are in the 14-day trial. Um, and make sure you do watch videos. Make sure you do market replay and order prints. If you don't know how to do it, ask. Okay, people will help you. Um, really watch the THT videos that I've done over the last two weeks. If you go to webinars in the forum and go down to THT, it's at the very bottom, like webinars, and you'll see THT. It's where all those videos are. Those will probably help you more than any other video you're going to watch. Because they're going to let you see the value of the investment of education. Some people are going to be able to profit, like, you know, quickly. Some are going to take months. Um, understand that, you know, it's an investment in education. And if you total the cost of the year cheaper than any profession that you could possibly invest in, so look at it as an investment in your education. Don't be like, I have to make money right away, okay? Because that's how you lose money. Make sure you know what's going on, following traders, listening, learning, trading a demo, making money live. You know, give yourself, you know, have a one-year plan that I want to be very profitable within the next 12 months, maybe within the next two or three. But, um just don't over promise yourself what's going to happen. 
Otherwise, people get in, they think in two weeks they're going to master Apex. There are thousands of hours of videos, okay? Um, your job in two weeks is not to master Apex. Your job in that two-week trial is to evaluate and go, is this worth me continuing to invest my time and some of my money into so I can become a better trader? It's not, can I master this in two weeks and become an, a, an awesome trader? It's... Is this worth me investing my time into? So I hope you get that as a trial. So many people come in and they don't get that. They come, they think that they're going to just master everything in five seconds. And um, and some do. You know, some are really quick, but they also have a lot of previous trading experience. Obviously, the nearer you are, the more words you have to learn what they mean. And uh, just the trial is for you to evaluate if is there value here for you. And if you ask people in the room, they'll definitely tell you. I think they would agree that. There's a lot of value. So, um, trapped orders. Explain trapped orders. Okay, that's the yellow ones. Okay, you'll notice know, they're always on the bid side on a buy, and they're always on the offer side on a sell. Okay. Basically, what a trapped order is, it's a lot more volume on one side where a lot of buyers got filled, right? Because that's the sellers. There. A lot of buyers got filled because they thought the market was going to go up, and it didn't. It went down. It closed down. So it's a, it's a high volume amount of buyers, remember, because these people are sold by a high volume of buyers, or in this case, a high volume of sellers. And the bar closed, you know, up. So these people went in and sold, and basically got trapped, trapped, trapped. You know, meaning they're gonna have to take a stop because the market's going in the wrong direction of their trade. And the blue is the market. You know, you'll notice it's on the buy side, it's on the offer, and on the sell side, it's on the bid and that's where you have a very high volume of orders compared to previous bars um, leading in the market and they'll be at the top or the bottom of the bar so I get close strong up or close strong down compared to previous bars That's, that's pretty much what they mean. So, um, I have them on my chart because I'm still trying to see if I can find some that really helps. But, honestly, I'm getting to the point that I may take them off because I'm like, you know, I got trapped orders here, but I also have trapped orders at the very top of the market. You know, I have, you know, leading volume. So, I'm like, is that really telling me much at all? So we're, like I said, I'm just, my goal on a chart is to continually try to scrub it and eliminate anything that's duplicative or um, unclear. Market replay is like one of the best tools that you can get. Let's see what we're thinking. Let me check. Let me check our website. Yeah, we have it down here at the bottom. So if it still works, yeah, it does. Good. <laughs> so really, really useful tool, especially for order prints, because you go in, you can download the last, you know, couple weeks, and then you can actually run it like forward in like speed of like 500. 
okay? And it's like, boom, populate everything. And then you can scroll back and go bar by bar and look at it. And you can compare it with like, you know, a Zizone chart or whatever. And it helps you sort of learn a little faster versus having to wait for every bar to complete before you make a decision. So it really expedites your learning curve. I trade them as often as I want. There's not really a number. But Iron Condors had the implied volatility. Obviously, I'll definitely trade those. It's not that I expect them to stay in range. I expect them to not exceed that range during for that time period. Like I'll say for this hour, this is how far the market usually moves. Yeah, my risk reward ratio is usually much greater than one to one, especially with the hedging. Okay, so then your question on these hedges right here. And I like to see all the options, not just one, but this obviously would be a hedge that would favor the upside. You're looking to go long on this trade. And you're buying at 47.85, selling at 47.79. That is a six dollar risk the difference between the offer and the sell. You're more than covering um, your downside, which was previously 85 bucks. So you took an 85 dollar risk down to six, which is fantastic. The market goes against you then at this point you actually can start making money on the trade so pretty cool hedge um for an upside and a downside so you, you did well and let's see here there's not a lot i mean it has to be basically 20 ticks in your favor because you look at the risk of the hedge and then at that point you start you know making money the s p one looks like you're going for a short hedge primarily um, I can't see all the details of the other contracts, but um, looks like you would. That probably is a pretty cheap hedge, and you'd be ready to take off. And if it goes the other way, it's going to have to make all this back, and then at that point, it could start profiting. I don't know what you mean. All I do is talk to CL. I trade all sorts of stuff. Just been bringing up CL lately. I had to play that wick together with the magnet. And then that bar also hit it. That bar, these two actually went below it. So you tried, interesting, you tried what, but what never worked for you. So I just have that's in there, so I can't quite understand. Chip says, the THT videos have flipped the lights on for me. So I guess the, if you go, to the home section, you scroll down to the webinars, you'll see THT, and that's where like all the videos I've been doing on order prints and everything else, how to look for reversals, how to look for continuations, how to trust stops, Tightly. All that's in there. Yeah, I think we're getting stuck on this mini magnet, unfortunately. Um, it all depends on how much RAM and processing you have. I mean, I can have 20 charts open at a time, but I have a lot more ump than most traders do on my computer. 
I usually only focus on a couple markets. What I'll do is I'll have a lot up, I'll see what's moving, and then that's what I'll trade. Again, if you ever want to find something, just go to the forum. So type in the word ultimate. Yeah. Ultimate hedge. And you'll see all these videos come up about how, where we went over the hedge. Exactly how they work, how to put them together. All that. So there you go. But, I mean, the hedge instructions are really pretty simple. I mean, don't make it confusing. It's buy a near the market at the money spread and find a low risk, close, um, close as you can contract that covers ideally all or more of the risk on the contract going in the opposite direction. Asian session, oil, NASDAQ, yen stuff. That's sort of what I'd be looking at. Yeah, yeah I do have a solid state drive. That's my primary drive. So and I have lots of processors. So like with everything we got going on, I'm at. Five percent. Yeah, I do recommend only doing market replay on a single instrument at a time. It's it can get a little funky if you're trying to do multiples. Here. Yeah, sort of weird, isn't it? It's like chilling out and letting it do its thing. All right, the contracts have expired. And now it moves, of course. Freaking oil. <laughs> now watch it just fly down exactly where we set it to now that the market is closed down on oil. By the way, that is a benefit of trading futures. <laughs> Let's see here. 47.80. So it basically stopped right there. Forty-seven eighty oh two was the settlement. All right, so that was for the this. I hate it when like the market moves like right after it closes. Okay, so made like 14 ticks on the 30 contracts I sold.
And then lost like, uh, it's like 29 of the ones I bought. So I lost 16 ticks on the trade uh, with my hedge, just honestly because it expired and it's still going. So if this is like one of the big benefits that I've highlighted before, um, and you'll see me highlight it in the hedge videos, is if you're trading a future contract, and like you trailing your stop down, all that fun stuff, okay? Then you get to keep going, even if the hedge expires because you're trailing. Because sometimes I'll hop over and I'll just put the future on and put the trailing stop in place. So, but, um, yeah, so 16 tick loss on the trade. You know, really not a big deal at all to lose 16 ticks on a whale. But we went in there with the uh, expectation of, I think, what, we had 20-something ticks uh, potential loss on the trade, 21 ticks. So we only lost 16, and we had zero stress rate. Like, I can come back tomorrow and trade again and be okay. And that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest things is you need to be able to clearly see the market, clearly look for the next entry. And when a trade doesn't work out, you shouldn't hit a low. When a trade does work out, you shouldn't hit a high. Okay? Um, if you're all ecstatic whenever you win and you're all depressed when you lose then you're not going to be a profitable trader I mean Lori will talk about this she's like man you just go in and you put it on and like you have no fear and you don't worry about it you know and it's like okay here's my risk that's what it is and the head strategy helps me really do that whether you're using futures or not, you know, if you're using futures, it's sort of cool because you don't have to worry about premium at all and you can keep going, but you still have to worry about the unfortunate when it goes against you and you have to make sure you have the money there, all that fun stuff. But um, you know, maybe we'll do a futures trade tomorrow with spread hedge so you can see that because um, I know we have futures traders and forex traders and all that in here. And uh, small account hedges are great. Large account hedges are great. Um, I did 30 contracts. I didn't do one. So, I lost 16 ticks, 10, 30. So, I lost like 480 bucks on the trade. You know what? If it would have came down here, it would have made like 10. So, it's okay. You know, 16 ticks. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like I'm a Christian, but, you know, God, you can't pray to God that you're going to win. It's like going to a football game and saying, please let us win. It's like, the only prayer to God is, please don't let me get hurt too bad. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's sort of it. You know, it's like, I just don't want to get really hurt. And, uh, you know, leave all that out. We Leave what you need to get, what you need to accomplish the need to make money to pay bills and pay rent, the stress of everything, that can't come into your trading room. You just, the fear, the greed, like you said, the sorrow, like you just, you got to leave it before you sit down and open the chart and go, I'm going to take my trade. My trade is my trade. Win or lose, whatever. And I'm going to trade. And the only way you're going to do that is if you can objectively look at charts, objectively follow a system, start seeing on the chart versus getting scared, like I expect a battle here that's going to take forever. I mean, that's really what slowed us down right there, right? And 
not over risk your account. You know, at the end of the day, you shouldn't have more than a 5% drawdown. And uh, ideally, you don't have, you know, have that at all. But, and that's why I recommend like the 5% divided by six. But this re head strategy really lets you lower your risk. The only drawback is the market has to move a little further um, in order to really lower that risk. But I love not having to think about a stop loss. It's, to me, it's like the best thing in the world. Like, not literally not going, I need to stop, I need to stop. It's like, nope. Both contracts expired at the same time, covered it. Like this right here, my risk was never going up as the market rised. Right? Never went up. So, went down, oh, actually went down as the market went down, but it never could get greater than what my initial risk was. And that just, knowing that, that's why I sound so calm when I trade. That's why I start and talk to you. Because <laughs> if I didn't have that kind of, you know, if I was just straight futures and no hedge, trust me, I'd be having that chart, like eyeballs on it. I wouldn't talk near as clearly. But if I put a hedge on it, you know, now it's just a matter of time. All right, so tomorrow we'll do a session where... I don't know, maybe we trade an oil future or something like that and throw a hedge on it. Sound like a plan? Hello? Do you mean out of the spread option? Are you talking about spreads? Binary? No. Do not use binaries to hedge at all. They will not help you a bit. It's just a waste of money. I've tried, I've tested it a thousand different ways. So yeah, here's a trade on gold. Somebody was hedging and their risk never got larger. Because they have those two positions on. So good job, Jason. It's, it's nice, right? You're like, okay, accept the risk. Next, you know. And this is actually where, when you do that and you put that trade on, now you can be free to go look at NASDAQ or oil or Russell or, you know, whatever else it is that you like to trade because your mind isn't tied up in. Okay, every single tick, so you can't even think about another trade. For iron condors, the only way I hedge with them is with out-of-the-money contracts when I'm collecting premiums. That's the only time I use binaries to hedge. And they're resting orders, so they're waiting to be um, filled. It's not going to get filled them right away. So I, the market has to oscillate for me to get those hedges in. And that's because I literally know, like, at this price point is where I will start to lose because I'm collecting on this premium, right? So if it moves this far, it's moved past my premium. So if I get one a little bit closer for cheap enough, then hey, that can, you know, cover me for a hundred dollars, another, you know, hundred ticks, ten points, you know, whatever it is, what type of contract it is. So uh, that's where where I use hedges is on that. So, so yeah, stand corrected. I do use them for hedging, but just for iron condors because I know I have a defined risk on both sides and I'm using the premium to put it way outside.
right, right now, market conditions do not favor iron condors because the implied volatility is so low. Not really the time to play with iron condors. You want to sell premium when volatility is high. You don't want to sell it when volatility is low. So the idea of yet a lot higher than what it is right now. It's like a 10 or something last time I checked. It's like a 10 year low. 20, 25. It can be good before news. It could pop it up some. So, but just overall, we're like, that's one of the reasons we're seeing such cheap hedges right now. And that's why you hear me talking about hedges a whole lot recently is the applied volatility is so low. I mean, I'm like, crap, I can buy it daily and hedge with it because there's barely any premium in it so if the implied volatility is really high i'd have to choose entry base because i mean you know like marianne like she chose to trade you know it was like 16 dollars for three more dollars she could have like you know a hedge all day long well normally it'd be like 16 dollars and like 40 dollars so yeah you definitely would go with the 16 dollar intraday hedge so You'll notice when premium gets really high and it's hard to find, like, like that's a way to sort of, if you're looking at hedges, if you see that it's really hard to find a hedge on a daily contract, then premium is probably going up. And in May, it's just, it's actually a, a market seasonal cycle. Diagnostic trading is about seasonal, fundamental, technical, and statistics. And a seasonal cycle is that the market usually does drop in volatility in May and during the summer. That doesn't mean you can't make money trading. It just means that, you know, you need things like this right here to help you tighten your stops when you trade. And you probably don't want to be looking for premium collection strategies at the moment. Does so that make sense? So you have to change a little bit. Uh, you know, what the way that one of my mentors explained it to me is you have a strategy. And it's like you're looking f like imagine it being like a face, a person. OK. But when they turn their face far enough, you stop trading that strategy. When they turn it back, you start trading that strategy again. And that would be like an example of iron condors is because the volatility. And that, that's actually what makes binaries a little more difficult is because of how big a role of implied volatility plays in them. So um, making them move very slow or very fast or, you know, can be difficult, but uh, we have some cool things that we're working on that I, if they work out, I'll be very happy to share. Right, you don't play golf with just a putter, you sort of see what's going on. Um, I zone and C's were made for all market conditions, especially when combined with order prints to help you tighten your stops and not let it go all the way back to a predictor and give all your money back. That the combination is insanely powerful. All right, do we have any other questions? Fun little morning session. So we went in and we're going to have to see a trade to sort of slowly inch. without stress and we knew hey we gotta break all this before we really make money so but if we wait till then then the whole thing would cost a lot more all right y'all are welcome y'all have a great day and um, i'll see you tomorrow i got the radio show and then um, i'll be in the room okay You're welcome. Thank you. Everybody, thank you for being here. Y'all have a great day.